July 1806, we set sail from the sweet cove of Cork. We were sailing away with a cargo of bricks for the Grand City Hall in New York. It was a wonderful craft, she was rigged for and aft. And oh, how the wild wind drove her. She stood several blasts, she had 27 masts, and they called her the Irish Rover. Of the best by your rags, we had two million barrels of stone. We had three million sides of a blind horse's hide. We had four million barrels of bones. We had five million hogs, we had six million dogs. We had seven million barrels of bones. We had eight million barrels of all nanny goat's tails. And the whole of the Irish Rover. SPFL Trophy is here in paradise and who better to bring the famous piece of silverware up the Celtic way and through the gates, well, two of the greatest number eight to play for the club. Current captain Scott Brown and former captain Paul McStay. He may live at the other side of the world, but he's always welcome here. What a legend the maestro is and it's fantastic to see him and he was delighted to be on hand to help Scott and lead the team up the Celtic way in front of hundreds of delighted supporters when the team arrived. You can see them there. We'll go through the starting lineup very shortly, but it's a great occasion here at Celtic Park. Trophy day, of course, hearts are the visitors. A bit of a, a rehearsal for the Scottish Cup final at Hamden next week, but there's a great aerial view. Scott just been handed a, a number eight balloon as both he and Paul McStay bring the SPFL trophy into the stadium and that's where we are myself and Simon Donnelly welcome to Celtic TV's live coverage of the final game of the SPFL season the team will be presented with the trophy at the end of the match um, the match as the manager said kind of gets in the way but we're hoping for a victory of course to go into that uh, cup final next week Simon you've won a title a famous title here when you stop the 10, you know, for that, the generation of fans who know nothing but success, you know, the youngsters nowadays, what would you say to them? Uh, lap it up, lap it up and enjoy it, you know, as long as it goes. And we obviously hope they go nine and 10, the, uh, the current team, but yeah, it was a wee bit different than my day, a wee bit more pressure on final day. Uh, the guys can get out today and relax and hopefully get a win going into the cup final next week, but more importantly, celebrate, you know, the achievement again this season. How difficult is it? We'll hear from Neil Lennon, we'll, we'll hear from, from Christopher Iyer as well, but from, from your perspective, you will understand just how difficult it is to win titles. It may be eight in a row, Celtic may be clearly the dominant team in the country, but then nothing gets handed to you on a plate here. No, and the, the, the double treble, you know, shows what these guys have did over the last couple of seasons at the club. And to be sitting here with eight titles in a row, it's a fantastic achievement. You can't underplay that at all. Uh, as I say, I was in the 90s, you know, a really difficult period for the club. Uh, and it was almost relief when we, we stopped the 10. Uh, but this, this current squad are, are going from strength to strength. Disappointment last week, obviously, at Ibrox, But a great achievement again and going for the, the, the treble treble next week. Let's have a look at the starting lineup then and a very interesting bench as well before we hear from Celtic manager Neil Lennon. A lot of changes, a lot of players rested for the cup final. Gives an opportunity for some youngsters to come in. Scott Sinclair's image there because he is captain this afternoon. It will be Scott Bain in goal, a back four of Ralston, Samunovic, Ayer and Toljan plays at left back. Near Beaton and Ollie and Cham and the two behind Mikey Johnson, Ewan Henderson, Scott Sinclair with Oliver Burke up front. On the bench for Celtic, De Vries, Benkovic, Daniel Church, Callum McGregor, Armstrong, Okoflex, Stephen Welsh 
and Karamoko Dembele. A 16, 17, 18 and 19 year old on the bench. What do you make of the squad there, Simon? It's different, you know, it's giving guys a chance there. You know, we say it's a nothing game today, but guys like Oliver Buck, you know, there's a cup final round the corner. And the young boys, what a, what a chance to, to make your debut if it's a Dembele and an Okoflex and a full, full house here at Celtic Park. You know, it's dreams are made of that kind of stuff. I think Dembele's only 17, so what an opportunity if he gets his chance. 16. 16. Okoflex is 17. Um, let's hear from the manager then. He gave a hint when he did his pre-match news conference about bringing in these youngsters for this game. You know, we've got a couple of boys who are carrying knocks and have been for quite a while, so... We don't feel the need to risk any of them with the cup final looming in, you know, the cup final off the back of winning the league, which seems to have been forgotten, you know. Um, so we're very much looking forward to the next sort of 10 days, two weeks. But over the course of the season, they've won the league comfortably. Somebody, one of your fellow peers, said we stuttered over the line. We didn't stutter over the line at all. The league was won, you know, two weeks ago with plenty to spare and they've won the League Cup already and we're in a cup final. I think it's a remarkable achievement again from the players. Do you think remarkable. that perception has perhaps um, increased in the last few days because of the result last weekend? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, but there's always an e-jerk reaction. You know, I think certainly in, in present day football, there's a sort of furore after one game, you know, whether it be social media or whether it be phone-ins, blah, blah, blah. I mean, there's so much more analysis and and reaction and you know you just have to keep a, a, a lid on it and keep calm. We played with a handbrake on on Sunday, there's no question that we deserve to lose the game but it's not terminal by any means. The league's the league, all the hard work was already done and now we have one more game to achieve something historic again for this group of players so it's just so much to look forward to and be excited about and be proud of. Very special occasion, it's always a great atmosphere. The game the game sometimes gets in the way, but ultimately it's all about you know Scott going up and picking up that trophy with the, the podium full of players who deservedly are the champions. So I'm lo I'm looking forward to that moment more than anything else. Is that what Celtic manager is all about? Yes, no question. The league's a priority, and we've done it now eight years in a row, which is very special in, in the modern day. It's a very difficult thing to do, and uh, we look forward to. The cup final and going into the next season trying to defend for a ninth name. Marion Shved in training. Had a look at him. Well, well, yeah, he trained yesterday and he looked great, you know. So, unfortunately, can't use him. But he's a very exciting player. You know, he's done brilliant things in Ukraine and um, looked great at home yesterday amongst his new teammates. So, again, exciting prospect to look forward to next year. A positive, brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant, yeah, he's a good, good player, Ukrainian player of the year, and I think um, hopefully he's going to have a very good career. He's the type of player that you know we really enjoy at Celtic. He can beat players, he's got a strong left foot, good finisher, creative, quick. You know, and he's at 21. There's a lot of scope in him. Neil Lennon there, Simon clearly a little bit frustrated that you know as he said, you know, wants to focus on the on the positives and I suppose this is coming off the back of a defeat of a defeat to Rangers but he's right to point out that that defeat really didn't mean anything doesn't mean anything yeah of course we'd have loved to have to have won the game but he certainly feels that there seems to be some sort of negative reaction that's come from that yeah I wouldn't like to say people get complacent with success because that's something that we shouldn't do at all but I think on the back of that Rangers game I think there has been a wee bit of lull with the performance of the boys that day. It was the same at the turn of the year and Celtic responded from that, you know, and came into the new year strongly and ultimately created that gap that won them the title. So the guys have really got the job done there. Uh, the next job out with today is, is next week and as Neil says there, it's historic. A treble treble. It's never been done before. It's domination at the moment and everybody should, you know, love to be part of it. You know, everybody at the club should be excited for next week. And I suppose it shows you at the kind of highest levels when they're at the professional game, just, you know, when the edge gets taken off, because the league's already won, perhaps that's the little difference, which won't be there next week because the edge will be back. Well, that's the thing. Over the, the last two years that I've worked with yourself here, every time there's been a question posed of this team, they've answered it. You know, when, when it really means something, they've always come up with an answer, whether it's against Rangers here or important games against Aberdeen and Motherwell in Cup finals, they've came up trumps. Uh, and I expect them to do that next week again.
Yeah, clearly a number of players uh, being rested, the likes of Callum McGregor on the bench. We know that Kieran Tierney is kind of being, being used sparingly at the moment. Um, I made a mistake in telling you Simunovic was playing, but you probably noticed it's Benkovic. So Simunovic on the bench, perhaps being rested for next week as well. So plenty to look forward to this afternoon. If we get a glimpse of some of the youngsters on the bench, we'll look forward to that. And of course, the, uh, the trophy lift and then the cup final. Always plenty to look forward to. If you are a Celtic fan, let's look back on some of the goals this season that won us the league. champions again but never ever take it for granted um, looking back at the at the season there Simon what were the stages for you that were the that were the crucial ones I think we touched on it a minute ago the response from the defeat at Ibrox you know at the turn of the year I think Rangers get back to is that a point or two I think points difference, I think, yeah. and uh, to move away from them so strongly after the, the turn of the year not conceding goals for so many games uh, I think that was an important part of the season and then even just watching that there with, with Lenny, when Lenny came in, an important game at Tynecastle, you know, last minute 
or six minutes in injury time up at Dens. Mm. These were big points, big uh, turning points in the in the title race. So I would look at that right over the season. Fantastic achievement, but they were the kind of periods where I thought, you know, Rangers would have got a wee glimpse of Celtic at that point at the turn of the year, and Celtic just pressed the fast forward button. And those are the stages that you were talking about that when when questions have been asked or when Celtic look as if we've been in a little bit of adversity or, or fighting against a tide that. that the questions have been answered on the pitch. Yeah, and even, even the Rangers game here, you know, when Rangers get back to one each, uh, we covered that game and Jamesy gets the goal just late on to, to secure the points. As I say, this team, you cannot uh, undermine anything that they've achieved. Every time there's been a question, they've answered it. Looking back then, you know, we talk about not taking these title wins for granted, and certainly I grew up supporting Celtic in the 80s and 90s, and you, <laughs> you, played, you, you couldn't take anything for granted because it was it was pretty slim pickings. I mean, just looking back, for, for me, the ones I remember, the title wins that I remember most vividly were, were 1986, the famous 5-0 um, win at Love Street, and, and 88, the, the centenary year, and, and, and the celebrations back then, and just going back, and I can transport myself back to those days yeah. and, and, and how it felt. Are those the ones that, that stand out for you? You're a couple of years younger than me. Yeah, uh, thanks for uh, saying that. Uh, I think uh, they're the ones that stick out. You know, we, we, we touched on it just watching Paul McStay come up the Celtic way there. I think it wasn't a title win, but 1995, the Scottish Cup, uh, to watch those players, you know, six years I think the club had went without a trophy and to watch guys who had experienced the success, McStays, the Grants, Toby Burns and Billy Stark who were the management team and the relief, I can get it now at, at 19, 20, I possibly wouldn't mm. but I can get it and, and that was important uh, in the history of the club you know, to see these guys who had experienced the success go through a barren period and then get back so they just now as I said at the start of the show lap it up you know, and hopefully there's more success to come. Absolutely. Well, of course, Scott Brown and Mikael Lustig have been here for the uh, the eight successive titles. Neil Lennon was here uh, for the first three, of course. Um, but one man who's been here for the for the most recent three is Christopher Iyer. He's found a, a regular place in the, the central defence and the hoops, and he's been uh, been getting a real cult following now amongst the supporters with some real dominant performances at the back. Earlier this week, he caught up with Celtic TV's Ryan Rowe. So, Chris, Sunday's match. Looking forward to getting the hands in the trophy again and good to do it in front of the fans. Yeah, of course, it's a, it's a big day for the whole club and especially to come back at Celtic Park and lift the trophy in front of your fantastic fans is a, a brilliant day for the whole club. What's some of the highlights in the league for you this season? There's obviously been the victories against Rangers and a good performance for yourself in both those games, but where else in the league have you enjoyed playing? No, I think yeah, we've shown a really good consistency throughout the whole season and that's why we're, we're champions in the end. So I think yeah, when you play for Celtic, you play so many fantastic games and uh, uh, to win the league, you have to be so focused throughout the whole season and you see a dressing room full of confidence and players that are really pushing each other every single day and out on the training pitch and especially in the games. So it's just a fantastic uh, group of players to be involved in and uh, yeah, we're just happy to win the league. And done so by conceding the least amount of goals in the league. So as a defender, despite the fact there's been different players there, that shows that you guys have got a good understanding. Yeah, we've been defending really well throughout the whole season and the centre offs that's been playing has done, uh, done, done well. And there, as you said, there's been some changes throughout the season, but I think uh, as, a, as a collective group we've done well. And obviously this is the eighth title in a row for Celtic, a great achievement. You remember in your country a long period of dominance for Rosenborg, but it's not an easy achievement either to win so many titles in a row. So, you know, how difficult has it been? No, it's not uh, easy at all, but I haven't been here for so long. But uh, for the last three years, it's been a fantastic uh, achievement to win all the trophies possible. And uh, we still got one, one more big one to go this season. So it's been a... Uh, Exciting time for me as a young player to come through the grades and developing with uh, this dressing room and uh, obviously uh, doing so well for the whole squad has been really good. Yeah, I mean for the whole squad to be part of history, eight titles in a row, when every team that turns up, they want to beat Celtic, every single team. Yeah, but that's that's how it is to play for the biggest club here in Scotland. You, you have some really tough games every single time you play and uh, they, will, they will challenge you and they will be up for every single game. And, especially away from home, there will be fans uh, supporting them and wanting you to do bad, so it's just uh, it's just really exciting to play for this club. And what are the other maybe factors of it being exciting is all the history and 
on Sunday, Paul McStay, a Celtic legend, will be coming back. Do players like him and the Lisbon Lions give you guys inspiration? Yeah, of course. They're they are the greatest uh, team to ever to ever play for this club, and uh, you look at them winning the Champions League back there in 1967. It's uh, you have so much respect for them, and uh, f for us to try to try to do well in uh, at this time and uh, make them proud. It's of course difficult, but uh, I think we're doing well. And just a bit of a word on the game. Obviously, Hearts with two weeks in a row that. You know, you guys will go out there and, and need to beat them or want to beat them at least. Tough team to play though always. Yeah, Hearts, they're a really good team and that's why they're in the cup finals also. It will be a tough game but we really want to have a good performance before the big uh, cup final. So hopefully we'll perform well on Sunday and uh, get ourselves in a good position before the next weekend. Christopher Iyer there speaking to Ryan Rowe. Christopher Iyer starts for Celtic this afternoon. I'll go through the team uh, one more time for you. Scott Bain in goal for Celtic. It's a back four of Anthony Ralston, um, Philip Benkovic, Christopher Iyer and Jeremy Tolyan, who's playing at uh, left back for Celtic this afternoon. Near Beaton and Ollie in Cham. Mikey Johnson, Ewan Henderson, Scott Sinclair, who's the captain this afternoon, and Oliver Burke on the bench. Uh, sorry, Oliver Burke up front. On the bench, Defries, Simunovic, Daniel Church, <laughs> Callum McGregor, Armstrong Okoflex, Stephen Welsh, and Karamoko Dembele. Dembele's only 16. Okoflex is 17. Daniel Church is 18. Stephen Welsh, the defender, is 19. I mean, even Christopher Iyer there, he's just turned 21. There's a, there's a lot of youth around at Celtic. Yeah, and it's a perfect opportunity with the, with the league wrapped up to give them a, a chance. You know, Wires obviously been in and about the team consistently over the last two or three seasons, but some of these guys are getting their first taste of it. The little bits of Henderson that I've seen I like, you know, he set up a nice goal for Edward here earlier in the season, and everybody talks about Dembele. I've seen the little snippets, let's see him in the, in the flesh here What today. would you say, you know, you came in, broke into the Celtic first <laughs> team as a, as a youngster, you were a teenager at the time. We, we know for instance, Karamoko Dembele, what people say about him. We know he's got a really high profile for someone of his age. But someone who's been here and come out to an atmosphere like this, all right, there's a party atmosphere, but there's still pressure. What would your advice to him be? Go and play, play it simple. Uh, he's a fantastic talent. Listen to the experience around about the dressing room. I think Scott Brown is obviously in there today, albeit he's not playing. But listen to the experience uh, and go and take the opportunity, you know, enjoy yourself. Uh, 60,000 fans here at 16 years of age if he makes his debut today for the club. An incredible feeling that he'll, he'll never forget. Uh, but listen to the experience round about you and let them help you. I mean, you're talking about earlier on, you said, you know, eight in a row is great, but, you know, we're, we're looking hopefully to get nine and, and, and then ten. The likes of Dembele, Okoflex, who are on those three-year deals at the club, we're, we're hoping yeah. that these are the guys who can take us to those titles the more game time they get. Well, that's why you've got your, your youth system there, and, and we look back to James Forrest, Kieran Tierney, Callum McGregor have all come through, uh, and there's fixtures in the team now, you know, they've probably been your strongest 11. So these, these guys are the next batch, you know, that want to take their opportunity. Uh, I think it's important that the club do have that, you know, youth element coming through, uh, you know, accompanied by three or four from elsewhere. But having that theme through your, through your team is important for me. When it comes to legends, though, there are none greater than Billy McNeil. Sadly passed away recently, but Athletic Bilbao, the Spanish club, paid him an ultimate honour by giving him, of course, the One Club Man Award. And his daughter, Susan Chalmers, went to Bobao with fellow Lisbon Lion, John Clark, to collect the award, and we were there with them. John, how honoured do you feel to be presented with the One Club Man Award on behalf of Billy today in Bilbao? Well, it's a big honour, it's a big privilege, and also with his daughter being here, it's, it's more an occasion because one of the families here with us, you know, and uh, it's a privilege to accept it for him, you know. We've had a sad time lately, but this is a wee plus maybe to just generate a wee bit more atmosphere about to lift, lift people and the honours of a perfect honour for a, a Billy. I'm extremely proud. It's a fabulous honour. 
to be given to my dad on behalf of the whole family. We're very humbled, um, but also delighted that he's the recipient of the fifth One Man Club Award. What an atmosphere it was there and what an atmosphere here at Celtic Park. We're looking forward to this one, Celtic against Hearts. Then the famous trophy lift, your commentators, Paul Currihy and Tom Boyd. I'm getting some fertiliser. A wonderful sight, a wonderful sound as always, Celtic Park packed to the rafters, it's the final day of the Premiership season, it's Celtic versus Hearts, both teams in the tunnel area, just about to come out onto the pitch and Hearts will form a guard of honour for the champions this afternoon, which is a, a nice gesture from Craig Levine's side, of course this is a dress rehearsal for next weekend's Scottish Cup final, where Celtic are 90 minutes away from an unprecedented treble treble, so Hearts have, at their own request, wanted uh, to give a guard of honour, so a round of applause to the Hearts players for that gesture, so led by John Suter, who is the captain this afternoon. Celtic, of course, led by Scott Sinclair this afternoon. He's captain in place of the absent Kieran Tierney, Michael Lustig, and, of course, Scott Brown, and here comes Scott Sinclair, a special day for him and he will lead the Celtic team out. The eight in a row champions, Paradise rises to acclaim Celtic, and they will walk through that guard of honour formed by the Hearts players, so a nice gesture from the visiting side, and a big day for Celtic, of course. Tom Boyd, you know how hard it is to win a title here, and for this team to have now won eight in a row, it's uh, something special. Listen, it's absolutely fantastic the the, the, the the history that these lads are making. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's unprecedented for what they've done. Uh, a, a great guard of honour there from the, the Hearts players, though. I think they lost their, their hands for a wee minutes, a, a moment's applause. But uh, listen, this is uh, the, the record for all the hard work that has been on throughout the, the season. Uh, you know, not just what's been happening in recent weeks. You know, it's been a, a long season for us. It's not finished, we've got next week to go, but uh, Neil was talking about, you know, sometimes this game gets in the way of the celebrations and what will we uh, given to the supporters, so hopefully we'll be able to put on a performance today. Well, there's also a special presentation to Aaron Hughes, the Hearts defender from Neil Lennon and Craig Levine. He has made over 650 appearances now at club level and he is now Britain's most capped defender with 110 caps for Northern Ireland. So a presentation from Neil Lennon, of course, former teammate of Aaron Hughes at international level and Craig Levine, so warm applause for the Hearts defender as well. So a nice gesture there from both managers. But of course, the big news pre-match this afternoon, Tom, seven changes to the Celtic team. So Celtic will line up this afternoon 
Scott Bain and Anthony Ralston, Philip Benkovic, Christopher Ayer and Jeremy Toljan at the back. Our midfield three of Nier Beton, Olivia Incham and Ewan Henderson and our front three of Mikey Johnson, Oliver Buck and the captain, Scott Sinclair. Well, we know these games, I, I think, are usually about giving the players who have done it for you over the course of the season, but we've got a bigger fish to fry come uh, next week with uh, the possibility of the table treble. Um, so this game, I, I think, is about giving players games uh, with the sort of injury list that we have at this moment in time and, and trying things out. Uh, so hopefully these guys will be able to click and be able to play and be able to you know, get a good, decent team performance. We let each uh, you know the supporters down last week with a, with a level of performance. So we're back here at Paradise celebrating eight in a row. So hopefully we can get in a good performance. So both sets of players lining up round the edge Today, of the pitch. So today is uh, minutes of applause for Stevie Chalmers, of course, who had passed away recently. Of course, the last home game we had a tribute to Billy McNeil. Today we have a tribute to the man who scored the most important goal in Celtic's history. That was a wonderful tribute to Celtic fans singing in the heat of Lisbon as well. Wonderful tribute to a Celtic legend and a great man and Scott Sinclair. Now we'll give the pre-match huddle talk. It will be hearts to get the game underway. Celtic will shoot from left to right as we look from a vantage point. Remember, this is the last league game of the campaign. And Celtic looking to...